Hey what's up, my name is PJ and in this video I'm going to show you the importance of shutter speed in the flash exposure triangle. Hope you enjoy. Okay, today we're here in Treasury Gardens in Melbourne, Australia. We are shooting a few bits and pieces, shooting some portraits of my buddy Darren here. And I want to show you the importance of shutter speed in your flash photography. I know myself, it was one of the biggest mistakes that I was making when I was learning to shoot flash. And I'm going to show you how it works in the exposure triangle. Okay, so I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, then you already have a basic understanding of how photography and exposure works. Regardless, right now we're going to go through the exposure triangle because it's actually really, really important to understand how exposure works with ambient light and how it works with flash. With ambient light, it's pretty simple, right? We have the shutter speed, so the amount of time that the shutter is open and a sensor is exposed to light. We have the ISO, which is the degree of sensitivity of your sensor to the light coming in through the lens. And we have the aperture, which is the size of the hole at the back of the lens, letting light into the sensor. So basically when using flash, you treat your aperture and ISO the same way that you would just with any other regular ambient exposure. When you open up the aperture, you're letting more light into the camera through the lens and it includes the flash exposure. Same thing with the ISO. When you turn up the ISO, it allows your camera sensor to make the most of the lights coming in and it affects the end exposure and the light coming from the flash as well. With the shutter speed, however, the rules begin to change a little bit. When you speed up or slow down the shutter, it's true that you drag more or less ambient light into your camera. With the flash, however, that burst of light that comes from your strobe has exactly the same duration, no matter where it falls in the exposure. So whether your shutter speed is one two hundredth of a second or one tenth of a second, the time that your flash is projecting light into your exposure remains the same. If this bar represents the length of your shutter speed, then this little sliver is a flash exposure and therefore you can put it anywhere within the duration of your shutter speed and your flash exposure will remain the same. Think about it logically. If you make a hole smaller in your lens, less light can get through, including flash. If your sensor is less sensitive to light, then less light is going to hit it, including flash. If we extend the ambient exposure longer and do a 1 100th of a second shutter speed, it still doesn't matter wherever the flash goes in that exposure, the power, the, the you know effective power is going to stay the same. The effect of the flash on your exposure will not change even if you add more ambient light into the exposure. We should have a pretty good exposure here already. We've got the Godox P90L softbox. Going into that is the 8200 flash, triggered with some pocket wizards. The flash is set to a quarter power. I'm at 200th of a second, F4 ISO 100. Let's see what the exposure looks like. I'm gonna stand up here because Daz is a pretty tall boy. Three, two, one, nice on Daz. Cool, so very clean, nice light from, from the softbox, but there's nothing really happening in the background. In the normal exposure triangle, we have shutter speed f-stop ISO. In this case, the flash exposure is good. It's spot on in fact. But what we want to do is get a little bit more light in the background from the ambient exposure. So the way we do that is to change the shutter speed. It's going to be open for longer, letting more light in, but because the flash is so fast, that's only a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. So that exposure is not going to change within the shutter. So if this is the distance that the shutter is open for the exposure, this is 200th of a second, the flash is only one ten thousandth of a second, so it's one tiny sliver in the middle. No matter what we do with the ambient exposure with the shutter speed, the flash is still going to be that tiny little sliver in the middle of that. So if we drag it way out here, the flash exposure is going to be the same, but the ambient light is going to be so much more. I'll show you right now. So again, this is one two hundredth of a second, F4 ISO 100. Three, two, one, nice does. Looking good, now I'm gonna do the exact same exposure, not change the flash settings, but open up the ambient light by one step. We're gonna change it to one one hundredth of a second. Three, two, one. So comparing the two, exactly the same flash exposure, but we have more light coming in in the background. I'm gonna push it even more. I'm gonna go another stop, one fiftieth of a second, F4, ISO 100, see what happens. Three, two, one. Cool. As you can see from those three pictures, the flash stays the same, but there is so much more ambient light in the exposure. 
Okay, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the files now. The first image is our baseline, one two hundredth of a second, which means we are shutting out that ambient light. And it's pretty dark in the background, not too much color there, but the flash is nice and bright where it should be. The second exposure, we're lifting a little bit of detail and color out of the shadows in the background there, and even the shadows underneath Darren's face are lifted out a little bit, and the flash is still nice and bright where it needs to be. It hasn't really changed at all. The last exposure is our 1 50th of a second. It's a lot closer to balanced. You can see a little bit of a room light on Darren and just lots of nice color and detail in the background and the flash exposure still hasn't changed. This is honestly so, so important to learn if you're doing any type of flash photography, including on camera flash. You can see it illustrated here a lot easier when they're all lined up side by side, but it's basically just about controlling the image and getting the balance right between flash and ambient light. Sometimes you might want a darker background. For example, a lot of what I do with band photos, I underexpose the background a little bit so I can get nice blue sky tones or sunsets or whatever in the background and then you bring the subject up with the flash. So it's all about the balance and this is probably the fundamental, this is probably one of the most important lessons you can learn while learning to use flash. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you learned something, give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.